Well, um, hi everyone. Welcome to our town hall today with Columbus City Schools. We are really thrilled to have um, our superintendent, Dr. Talisa Dixon and um, Alicia Gillison here uh, who are just doing really moving mountains at the moment um, to help kids in our city. So we're looking forward to this, this conversation because the COVID-19 global pandemic has brought the, an upheaval to many of our systems that families rely on. But I think especially with education, not only is it taking kids out of the environments they typically rely on, but also I identify with this as a parent, we wonder what our kids are, um, if our kids are gonna be able to keep up, you know, if they're gonna lose anything during this period. And um, I am so grateful to the steps that the Columbus City Schools have been taking to help parents feel encouraged about this time of upheaval. Um, I know that every day um, I'm thinking about what kind of experiences I'm giving my kids. And I'm also thinking about everything I have to do for my own work. That's a very difficult balance in the middle of a time we're also concerned about keeping our community healthy. Um, so I hope this is a good conversation um, for folks who are joining us. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some resources for young children, but I first wanted to um, give Dr. Dixon a chance for some welcoming uh, remarks. Well, first of all, thank you for, for having us and having this um, discussion. Um, we know that families um, are home with their kids um, 24 hours now and have wanted to be very creative um, with making sure that they have the lessons that they need outside of what we're providing. And so I wanted to say thank you to our, our parents, one, for your patience, um, and two, for just making sure that that, that learning still occurs um, every day, even if it's not what they're doing, uh, what they will be doing in the school, but just ensuring that they have some of those same routines of getting up and, you know, making sure they have an assignment in the morning or something. I think that's, that's very important. Um, for our students and families. So thank you for this dialogue. We, we're ready to discuss what we're doing, um, the future of this work, and also the, the community and how well the community has joined in um, to help our students and their families in the Columbus area. Wonderful. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Great. Well, I'm going to um, just offer a couple things. I, my, my children are not yet school age. My daughter is four and my son is two. Um, so for anyone who's on the line who might have CCS students, but also, you know, balancing some young kids in their home, I just want to do a call out um, for some of the resources available. So first and foremost, um, if you are an essential worker, and that's broadly classified, um, our grocery store clerks are essential workers, our CODA bus drivers are essential workers, um, pandemic childcare is still available for essential workers. So go to actionforchildren.org um, to see what's available for you if you don't have that yet. Um, we all know that critical brain development happens before age five, and it helps kids be prepared to learn when they hit kindergarten. The WOSU Public Classroom is a great resource, not just online, but it is a resource on television as well on the on PBS. So please check that out. It's a way of keeping your young children um, stimulated by by enriching material. Then with the with funding from the city, county, and some other partners, Future Ready Columbus launched Bright by Text. Um, there's more information on their website, but this is free to every parent across Franklin County. There are special weekly tips for parents during the pandemic that will come via text. There are tailored messages for um, from you know prenatal through eight years old to kind of help parents navigate this time. Uh, and the there's also a website called infoohio.org, which um, has access to um, a digital library and blog posts for sort of how parents can optimize resources they might have at home. So I encourage you, if you're balancing um, small children, to um, take a look at those resources. I will say, from my experience, many of the resources that I'm relying on and that I just ran through depend on access to technology. Um, so we are very familiar that there is a divide right now in what kind of resources both children and parents can access to keep themselves enriched and learning. Um, 
So, you know, with with that, I, I really want to um, commend you, Dr. Dixon, and ask you to share about what the district has done to ensure that CCS students keep learning um, now, uh, now that they must do it at home and sort of no matter what resources they have. Yeah, so thank you for outlining, um, out, outlining that for us. Um, one, um, we have actually, um, we turned on a whole online um, instruction for our students. So we turned that on on April 6th. Um, and that was no small feat for our staff um, to work together to provide that for our, our students and our, and, and our families. Um, again, this is unprecedented. I know people, are, uh, many people know that. And it calls for people who've not used technology um, as much as they have in the past to really now dig in and say, wow, um, how can I make sure that we have um, um, online access, Wi-Fi, and the, a Chromebook? So we were able to provide over 15,000 Chromebooks for our, our, our students and families. And as of next week, we're going to provide more. Um, for those families um, that have three or more students, um, there is a phone number they can call on our website on um, statesafeccs.org um, on the Columbus City Schools website, and they can go and see that call-in number because we understand that we heard our families when they say, hey, one Chromebook is not enough. We definitely need more. Um, and those were Chromebooks that we already had in our school district and that we were able to loan those out to our parents. So we did not go out and buy Chromebooks. We used exactly what we already had in our storehouse. And we said our families need these more than just sitting in our buildings. Let's give these to our families and our, and our students. Um, and then Wi-Fi. We have partnered, we know that the libraries have amplified their Wi-Fi so that families um, could go to the parking lots of our libraries and in our schools. So 104 of our 109 buildings, we've amplified Wi-Fi there for our families to be able to utilize that. Now, for a lot of families who are saying, oh my gosh, superintendent, that's not ideal. Um, but it is a first step that we were able to, to make for our families and our communities and we've also, um, our partner, I know I can, has actually helped secure 509 hotspots. Um, so we wanted to be able to provide those devices um, first to our seniors, because we want to make sure that our seniors um, get their work done doing, um, as they prepare um, for the end of the year and graduation. Um, and we are partnering with some other organizations so that we can provide more hotspots um, for our students. So families, we, we hear you, we understand that that is a need and we are working to resolve that. So again, um, we ask that you please be, be patient with us. Um, you can go online and see those additional resources for our students. Um, our teachers uh, have been calling our students and checking on them. Um, I had someone share with me earlier today that the social worker called and checked on her daughter. Um, and that is wonderful. And that's what we want to do. One, we want to make sure education is taking place, learning is taking place. But two, we want to make sure we're checking on our social and emotional well-being of our students and our families. You know, they want to be with their friends. This is, this is new to them, not being able to see and touch their their friends and um, and so we want to make sure that we recognize that, um, but also want to make sure that our students are still reading. If they just read a book a day, do some you know mathematics. That, that learning, we don't want our kids to lose the love of learning during mm -hmm. this period, and that's something that um, they're familiar with. And we just want to make sure we're providing those resources. Um, in this time, and we know and we recognize it's not what our students normally would have gotten on a day to day, but we believe it's um, still enriching for many of our students. And then our teachers are able to differentiate and give our students more um, for those students that need more. Mm -hmm. That's great. Because um, one of the things that um, I keep thinking about is how much 
uh, our kids are having to adjust to this and then how much their parents are also having to feel their way through the dark. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned some ways that parents can be in touch with the district, you know, when they have questions or concerns. Can you highlight those again for us one more time? Um, um, just so we make sure that that uh, parents hear uh, the way that they can be they can be in touch. Oh yeah. So to our parents uh, again, um, it's something that we were able to do. And I just want to remind them when I came to the district, our families were saying we want to make sure the district is listening to us and hear our concerns. So we started this. Um, uh, we we hired as Alicia Gillison rather to be our chief of engagement. So we started an office of engagement where we have a direct strategy to engage our parents and our partners because we heard our families. So now we have a direct strategy to that. Um, and Alicia is going to talk to that. But families are able to go now um, and voice their needs. The uh, Alicia is going to talk about a needs survey that we actually have for our families because that was so important that the district would be more family oriented and family and be responsive to the needs of our families, because we want to educate with our families and our students. And, you know, we really wanted to make sure that we were united in that way. So again, if you go to our website and go to staysafeccs.org, we have all of these resources for our families and for our students right on the website. And to our families, we know that we need to put more. We know that those resources, we're working to make sure that all our EL families um, understand and, and they are in various languages. And then today we were even talked about where maybe we need to put some pictorials. You know, when families go to the website, maybe we need to have a picture of, of things so that we are remove every barrier from even people wanting to access the um, materials and have an understanding of their needs and how they can help our, our students and their families. Great, great. Well, um, access to technology is more important than ever for our students, but it also remains the case that if we want our students to succeed academically, we have to ensure they have access to basic yes. necessities like food. Yeah. So I know that the district has undertaken a massive effort to ensure students have access to food. Um, thank you, Alicia Gillison, for joining us today. And um, can you share uh, with the families watching right now how the district is helping to fight hunger among its students in this unique time? Thank you. Um, and thank you for this opportunity for us to be able to reach out to the community to share um, what we have put together in Columbus City Schools. And right now in Columbus City Schools, we have 15 feeding sites is what we call them and they're in every region of the city and these sites serve breakfast and they serve lunch and starting on april 20th our friends at the mid ohio food bank will also be set up providing fresh produce for families and we will also have the children's hunger alliance they will be at our sites as well providing a third meal that might be a dinner or a weekend meal. So we're pretty excited about that. It's going uh, relatively relatively well, I can say. Uh, we've even delivered, we even have a process where we are delivering food to the homeless shelter on Van Buren because we have a number of students and families that are in the homeless shelters. And we are starting our distribution of our breakfast and our lunch services to our students with multiple disabilities. So what we're trying to do, it's going to take a whole village and we have partners coming in like Children's Hunger Alliance, uh, Mid Ohio Food Bank, coupled with what we're doing as a district. Mm -hmm. And it's all about making sure our students get nutritional meals and that they're eating every day that they would be eating when they're in school. So there's the breakfast program, which runs from um, nine to 10. And we have our lunch program, which runs from 11 to one. And at those sites, starting on the 20th, we'll also have Children's Hunger Alliance, and they'll be providing family with a boxed meal for a dinner as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. 
Um, and if I could add, with that information, Dr. Dixon shared our website, www.staysafeccs.org, and there is a map of all of our feeding sites and the information on where they are, addresses, everything that a family needs. The one important thing that I want to leave everyone with today is please go to that resource, yeah. www.staysafeccs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gillison. Um, we know from uh, sort of summer feeding programs what a challenge it is to get um, to deliver nutrition to children when they're not in that school environment. And it's just right now is such a reminder of the great equalizer that public education is intended to be. Mm -hmm. Right. It keeps yeah. it keeps kids safe. It keeps them, you know, fed. It keeps them socialized. You were talking about Dr. Dixon, how much kids miss their friends yeah. and our schools are a cornerstone of our community. Yeah. So um, it, this undertaking to get to get food to kids is so critical. Yeah. And, um, you know, in truth, it will take many partners and residents coming together to ensure that our, our, our city students mm -hmm. have what they need to learn. I, I will highlight some of what the city has worked on. Um, we grant we grant millions each year just typically to human service organizations who are working now um, in partnership to help families in need right now. And uh, Mrs. Gillison highlighted many of those. So we partner with Children's Hunger Alliance to operate open site meals. Uh, programs in open site meal programs in the summer. We also partner with Family Mentor Foundation to provide buddy box meals for children who need nutrition over the weekends. Um, and these resources traditionally, again, are supporting meals provided through the schools uh, during, you know, over the weekends. And so during these disruptions, they are now doing double duty too to partner with you all uh, to help families during this pandemic. So um, there were there were many families who were struggling before um, this crisis, and I know that helping students and their families get their basic needs is not a new endeavor for our schools. It's part and parcel of providing instruction too, because you see the whole child, um, not just what they need when they're sitting behind the desk. Um, in that in that vein, and in the uh, spirit of partnership. Mm -hmm. I want to turn it over to you again, Mrs. Gillison, to share what partnerships um, the district is leveraging right now to help students and their families weather these especially hard times, not just food related, but really anything. Thank you for that question. Um, and, and before I go into that answer, um, what I want to do is I want to say thank you to what you're doing, mm -hmm. what city council is doing, what the mayor's team is doing, yeah. Columbus Urban League. We have a, a multitude of partners and people coming together and rising to the occasion. So when we talk about partners on our website, if I can just continue to say the most important thing for people to take away is we have a repository of partners, community partners that are all coming together to help our families. That's www.staysafeccs.org. We have uh, contact information for over a hundred different partners that are helping families with everything from free groceries, free internet, um, the anxiety periods that our families are going through right now. All you have to do is go to that website and we're leveraging our local partners as well. And I would hate to try to to list them all and, and to leave someone out. But Dr. Dixon mentioned, I know I can, who's been very, very instrumental, communities and schools, directions for youth. We can go on and on. But if there is something that our families and our students need, remembering that our core business is making sure that our students are safe and educated, it's yeah. right there on that website, www.staysafeccs.org. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are now going to take some questions from the community. Um, Mrs. Gillison, Kimberly Bridges asked, the available meal sites uh, start distributing breakfast, don't start distributing breakfast until after I have to be logged in uh, for work from my home. It sounds like um, Ms. Bridges has a work from home situation starting at 8 a.m. 
I'm sometimes able to leave on my lunch break so my student can get lunch but not breakfast. Mm -hmm. Are there other options available for obtaining meals through the schools for parents working from home mm -hmm. um, on pretty strict hours? We, we did receive another question along those same lines from um, a Maria who asked what collaborations exist mm -hmm. um, to deliver breakfast and lunch to, to homes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for that question. So what we what we can do in that area, and remember, we are continuously evolving and trying to service our families. Um, but going back to Kimberly's question, uh, when she can leave on her lunch break, she can actually leave on her lunch break and she can pick up at that time. She can pick up breakfast for the next day and lunch for the next day. Mm -hmm. So she can actually pick up multiple meals. And so we're, that's how we're kind of working and navigating through that, especially mm -hmm. if her students are not um, old enough or she is not comfortable sending them to our feeding sites, then she can on her break and when she has time, pick up uh, multiple meals for her families. And if there is um, something else that she would need or any parent, or family member listening to us right now, what you want to do, you're gonna get tired of me saying it, but <laughs> we have a uh, family needs survey and we are on 2.0. We had a family needs survey that was a 1.0 that really gave us the information so that we can align our partners and our resources towards the parents' needs. So we have updated that. Now we're family needs survey 2.0. And I have to illustrate that only because I don't want anyone thinking that this is the same survey you filled out before. On this survey, there's an opportunity for you to state exactly what it is that you need. And our team at Columbus City Schools, and that's our entire senior cabinet, will come together, look at those needs and see how we can mm -hmm. um, Address get our families and our students exactly what they need. And that website, once again, is www.staysafeccs.org. That's the Family Needs Survey 2.0. Please make sure you go to that, Kimberly, and write in what you need, and then we will get back with you. And that goes not only for Kimberly, but for any family member or parent that is actually hearing us, please go to that website. We're here to make sure you have exactly what you need. Yeah. Um, that is uh, a wonderful resource to know um, that parents can pick up when they go, they can pick up at the site for future meals. Yes. And I do just want to, um, you know, Dr. Dixon, your teams of people who are working together to deliver those meals right now, I want to give a special thank you to them. Mm. Um, I, I assume that this is a very different effort for your food service workers than what they typically yeah. go through. So they deserve a ton of gratitude from mm. all of us for being able to turn on a dime and deliver food in a new way and in this social, socially distant way and all of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what it shows is how the Columbus community is coming together. And, and that's what community is all about. When you think about the schools and the business and nonprofits, we really are one Columbus. And, and I think this these unprecedented times has provided us to, to demonstrate that even more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I love it. The team has, they say, we, we want meals, let's provide meals. There should be no barriers in helping our families and our students at this time. Um, and did we just drop all of things that we think were the right way to do things? No, there are no barriers. Let's help our families, let's help our students. Um, like for us, all of our students have email addresses now. We were so excited to say, now our students can email their teachers. Um, we remove that barrier. So email your teachers. The teachers are emailing their students. They're Zooming and doing all of these conferences because our students really wanted to see their teachers and vice versa. Um, our teachers have been doing some creative lessons and creative ways to get in touch with their students. And that's what it's all about. It's, you know, as Alicia stated, that safe haven. We want to be reminded that schools was a safe place for so many of our students. You know, they spent more time with us than they do sometimes at home when you think about the number of hours during the week that they spend with us. 
And we wanted to, you know, we had to remind ourselves that, wow, that safe haven, that, that place, that gathering spot for our students is gone, but how can we during these times make sure the students still had a sense of community? Um, so I have a group of student ambassadors and we met for the first time in a Zoom conference last week. And they said, we want to do this every Monday. I said, every Monday? So every Monday that we're starting next week, we're going to meet at two o'clock with that group of 15 to 18 students and just kind of talk about what it's like, you know, this COVID-19 period through their eyes. So That's we're amazing. not missing what, you know, addressing what they're feeling, what they need, and we're hearing it from, from, from them. So we're excited about that because sometimes it's easy for us to want to go in and fix it for our students. And we had to take a step back and say, it is important that they, they have advocacy and they have voice um, um, and that we're not doing something to them, that we're doing it with them and with our, and with our families. That's amazing. I, I mean, this is going to be, a, this is a formative experience for all of us. And I think our lives will never quite be the same, but think about our kids who are, you know, growing up right now. Yeah. And um, the message that you're sending them during a time that we feel we have little control. Yeah. It, you know, this group of 15 to 18, you're telling them, okay, you actually can have control. What do you, you know, this yeah. ad, this agency and advocacy you're talking about mm -hmm. is a really important way for students to feel like, okay, I have something to ground me and hold on to in a pretty uncontrollable environment. Yes. Yes. So I think that's yeah. great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So we, we talked about um, technology, we talked about food, and um, the last piece we wanted to be sure we touched on before opening it up to questions from um, live viewers. I don't think we can conclude without addressing what the end of this school year means for the class of 2020. Yeah. This is yeah. not how they expected to end their senior year. Dr. Dixon, what does this health crisis mean for our seniors and their graduation? Oh my gosh. You know, um, at our last board meeting, um, we had three seniors ambassadors to kind of speak on that. Again, getting their voice out and saying to us, let's work together. Let's not forget about them. You know, these were students that were born in 9-11, you know, mm -hmm. so they reminded us of when they were born and, and now what's happening and how can we make sure that we don't forget about that? And, and we said to them, we won't. We're going to do everything that we can to make it as most of a memorable experience as we possibly can. Um, but we have to use our health guidelines. We have to, you know, our, our governor is stating what we have to do. Um, but we're allowing them to work with us. I have um, scheduled a senior town, we're scheduling rather, a senior town hall meeting where I get to with all the senior classes of all 19 of our high schools, get to talk to me about the end of the year and how do we somehow um, um, celebrate and memorialize. We don't have the answers yet, but we are going to work with them and with our staff um, to recognize this great accomplishment um, um, that they have. And, and we know some of our students are still working. They're still working through a spring break and making sure those assignments and, you know, adding the finishes touches to their, to, to, to the work. Um, and so we want to capture that as best as we can during these times. And we, again, as I stated, we're going to work with them to, to capture those moments. Well, that, that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, again, this is, this is not what the class of 2020 expected. Um, no. So uh, we appreciate that update on, on where things are. Mm -hmm. So we are going to turn to questions from viewers now, and we really appreciate um, the, the live audience that um, has tuned in. So we are going to start with um, a question from uh, uh, Esther Flores for Mrs. Gillison. Um, so what help can CCS provide on the West side or elsewhere to parents who can't speak or write English and assist their children with English homework? There are children who have behavioral problems and need individual attention. Um, giving them a tablet might not be the right way to help with that. Uh, Mrs. Gillison? 
Well, yes. And thank you for that question. Um, when you look at our enrollment in, in Columbus City Schools, we roughly have 17 to 18 percent of our population that are, um, we call them English language learners. And so for the sake of this conversation, let's, let's call them New American or our immigrant families. And so we have partnered with uh, Ethiopian, Talawahido, Social Services, uh, Ohio, Hispanic Coalition, and other agencies. One uh, agency I was just talking with today, Our Helpers, which is a Somali-based community agency. And when you think about the West Side and over in the Wedgwood community, first I have to say I'm a West Sider, so um, I take pride in the West Side. Uh, so we are working with um, different agencies to assist with the translation of documents and the interpreting of documents. There are several different formats uh, or forums that we're utilizing. I utilize one, uh, it's called PALS Talk. And if they are familiar with PALS Talk, um, every Saturday at 3.30, I go on PALS Talk and there is an interpreter. And last Saturday, there were over 450 participants on this communication. And I share what we're doing in the district. And then they're able to ask questions um, on how we can better service the community or what are we not thinking about in servicing the community. But I'm excited to say I talk with uh, our helpers today, which is located at 4576 Morse Road and they have volunteer teachers that speak Somali, that speak Spanish, that are willing to tutor families. And when we think about our work on the west side of Columbus, we have a Somali helpline, we have a Latino helpline, we have a Spanish helpline and a French helpline. And if you will oblige me, I will share those numbers. If you have a neighbor or someone in your um, immediate community that is a Somali family and they need information. You want to have them call 614-365-8972. That's 365-8972. The same if we have Spanish speakers that do not speak English well, they want to call 365-5118. If we have French-speaking families, they want to call 365-5327. And those families that speak Arabic, they can call 365-6920. And Elizabeth, I will share this information with you so that you can put it on in your resources for our families, but it is very important that our families know on that website, I'll repeat it again until everyone can say it with me. It's www.staysafeccs.org. There are family resources on there. There are family resources for our new Americans and our immigrant families. And you can see there is Seabus Village where pretty much everything, once they click that link, you can go to your particular language and just about everything is translated. Information from CDC, information from Columbus City Schools. So we're trying very hard to work with all, all of our families to make sure they have what they need. So we don't wanna leave anyone out. And if there are other resources out there that we have not tapped into, please give me a call or email engage at columbus.k12.oh.us because this pandemic and the situation we're in now is going to take a all hands in effort and we're working very hard at columbus city schools to help our families and our children and if there are resources out in the community that that have gone untapped please let us know so that we can bring it into the fold so that we can service even more families. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. 
Um, our next question is from Lynn Nelson. How can IT professionals and the nonprofit community assist with any technology needs for both the schools, students, and parents? So if there are people out there that want to help in the IT professional community or nonprofit community, and I'd kick it to either one of you to answer that, whatever you think is best. Um, well, I'll first start off and I kick it to Alicia. That's a great question. And, and that's what I talk about when we love Columbus community, because people are stepping up um, and want to help. So I would say um, reach out to our engagement office and Alicia would give her her email. Um, but this is where we're, we're talking about um, helping not only access, but helping future planning. Yes. Because this is, you know, we're working on what's happening right now. But there's a big, bigger picture, right? So when we think about when schools open in the fall and learning in the future, what would that look like for our students of tomorrow, right? So we can't be stuck on today. We have to look at in our future. So we definitely want people to brainstorm and help us think outside the box with our education professionals of what that will look like. Um, and what platforms would be great for our organization to to use? Um, so thank you. That, that's an awesome uh, question. And our board, I want to say thank you to our, our, our board members who've allowed flexibility. So they're saying to us, whatever flexibility that you, Talisa, that you need to make sure that our students have what they need, they're providing that flexibility and offering service too. So thank you. Um, that we're um have that platform even those um um, um uh, officials those calls you have at noon every day uh, i think that is the public officials you are talking among yourselves to say how could we use our positions to help leverage um, um support for our students and our families and that's awesome so thank you to that caller Call um, Alicia, you can give that email address again so they can contact you. This is what that engagement office was. This is new to our organization. Again, we have an engagement strategy of how we engage our partners and our parents. So if they want to reach out and help us. We have that platform so that they can do so. So Alicia. All right, thank you, Dr. Dixon. So if there is anyone in the community and you want to assist, you want to volunteer, you want to donate, email me at engage at columbus.k12.oh.us. I'll repeat it in the event I went too fast. Engage at columbus.k12.oh.us and we'll be looking for your email. Yes. That's great. Thank you. We also received a question that you um, you just alluded um, to. You're already thinking this way, Dr. Dixon. Mm -hmm. um, but we we received a specific question from um, T Street. Dr. Dixon, will the online delivery of academics now serve as a gateway for opportunities for more blended learning in CCS in the future? Yeah, thank you. Great question. Yes, we, again, um, we don't want to stop. You know, I want to remind people, we just did a, a curriculum audit, right? We had uh, Fida the Kappa come in and do a curriculum audit just on what our resources. And, um, and one of those things, we're going to take the information from that audit and then knowing and thinking about our um, uh, working in the future and what future learning would look like and use this to set that long-term agenda. So we are going to amplify the opportunity to use online learning in a very different way for our students and, and, and let our students be a part of that. I think we're going to see that our students are kind of leading this for many of our families. Um, they, this was the way many of them communicated using online, I mean, using um, technology, using devices. Our organization is going to have to, we're being forced to embrace that even more um, and really think about learning in a very different way. Um, when you go, I think of a partner, think about COSI, right? When you go to COSI, I mean, that place is amazing because you're using out of the box thinking to, and to create something. 
this is what schools are going to be challenged to do and do more of it. Um, so yes to T Street, this is going to be, and, and um, I know that she, and she's with, I know I can, and she's also working with Ohio State University. This is an opportunity for us to envision education very differently. And Columbus City Schools wants to be one of the districts that's going to lead the way in that. All right, great. Okay, so um, we, we're we going to kind of start wrapping up here with, a, I think, the toughest question. So get ready. Um, and it's something that I think about a lot in with my city council hat on and with my parent hat on, to be honest. Um, we keep hearing about a potential second wave in the fall, right? Um, we know that life is going to be pretty different until we have a vaccine, which could be another 12 months or more out. If there's a second wave in the fall, I think what all of us as public officials, whether it's our city or our schools, what all of us have to do, this question is specifically about does the district have a plan, you know, or in, in works with a plan for potential closure in the fall. But I just want to say, you know, you and I, Dr. Dixon, have met in your office, and this is one of those questions that you know, sitting sitting back a little bit in the chairs, we could really talk about for 90 minutes, right? How do we just lay the groundwork for all the work that would need to be done if we have a second round? Because we didn't do anything perfectly this time. Right. And frankly, it's incumbent upon us to try to plan for ways to support our community even better in the fall. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll kick that to you. It, yeah. It's, um, I think it's, really a hard one and why it's maybe important for us to end on it. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think one of the things we're, lay we're laying the groundwork right now, right? I remember when you came to my office and you said, hey, could we do something as simple as provide this service? And I said, why not? And you sat back and said, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, we're good. And I think that's what we have to begin to say. We, you know, we bring people together and say, we, we have to plan together. It's not just Columbus City Schools in isolation planning on this island by ourselves, right? We have seen now that we're able to navigate in just four weeks because we're working with other partners together. It's the success of all the students in Columbus. You know, our success is the city's success. And we have to think strategically like that. We've already decided that we're going to form a task force just to think about reopening the district. What does it look like? We're watching um, the governor and Dr. Acton, and we're saying to ourselves, okay, if we have to um, wear a mask for a year, potentially, what does that look like? You know, we want to make sure that our students are safe first and then learning. And, and we have to do that with others and not the school district in isolation. So I think the challenge would be we're making sure that we have multiple people and organizations at the table with us so that we know that as we get ready to open up our doors, whenever that happens, for our 50 plus thousand students just in Columbus, but even our neighboring districts, um, I think it's going to take the efforts of everyone who has a part in educating students in Columbus, our private schools, our public schools, our, our charter schools, we have to unite and make sure that we are providing a 21st century education um, and provide it in a safe way for all of our students and our families and our teachers. Um, and, and we do it together and it's going to be very different than we've ever seen it before. And I'm excited. I know our team is excited. Um, the board is, ex is excited and, and we're breaking those walls, those barriers, so that we can make sure that um, we're leading. We're the largest school district. Uh, we're the capital city. I would love it if we are leading the way that the others can come and say, this is how Columbus did it and this is how they did it together. So when we say one Columbus, um, we really have to put some true meaning uh, behind and show people exactly what that is. Well, thank you. I, I'm sorry if you hear it sounds like there's a cannonball rolling in my house. My my toddler is running up and down the, the halls. Um, but, you know, I would love for Columbus to lead too, Dr. Dixon. That is inspiring. And I, I want to stay, I want the city 
Um, and that's really my pledge to you is to have the city staying at the table for that conversation um, in ways that we can help. If we confront this again in the fall, we want to be able to serve all our residents and all of our students even better. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot about um, equity, right? Yes. And that many homes are equipped in different ways. Right. Not, you know, in some ways, sort of equipment itself, right? Uh, wireless or, you know, actual computers or tablets. But in other ways, um, homes are equipped differently with stressors yeah. and challenges to being able for parents to be able to be there and and coach kids or not through this learning. Yeah. Um, so many people are out of work now. Um, you know, we've lost 700,000 jobs in the state of Ohio. Um, and the un that's, that equates to about a 12% unemployment rate and it's a developing situation. Mm -hmm. So families are going through, you know, many of them more than they ever have. Um, and even families who've suffered quite a bit are, are, have increased stressors. I also think about those um, those folks who are still coming to work every day and doing the essential work of um, response in this crisis. Mm -hmm. So, the we're learning these lessons as we go. I think I think none of us would would say we have a perfect response yet, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to be right there at the table with you, Dr. Dixon and Mrs. Gillison, to um, do even better if we confront this again in the fall. I mean, yes. fingers crossed we don't, but we really don't for now. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great. Well, um, with that, we I will thank everyone for joining. Thank you to the viewers who submitted submitted questions, and um, I and I would like to before we kind of sign off, allow each of you um, any closing remarks if you have them, uh, Mrs. Gillison. Thank I, you. I have a feeling you're going to give us a website address. <laughs> <laughs> website address yes. and uh, I just want to frame this yeah. the situation that we're in today is impacting every family every person mm -hmm. every business mm -hmm. so when you when you talk about equity uh, the educational system it hasn't been uh, equitable since its very inception mm -hmm. but it's us working towards impeeling back the layers right now we're responding to opportunities and challenges based on what our communities need. And I think although this pandemic is horrible, it is helping us set the stage for how we need to move forward. Yeah. And I can't impress enough upon our families. I know there's plethora of sites with information out there, but if you are a Columbus City School parent, student, family member, please go to our website, we have information for you on our food. We have our community partners on there. We've even developed a partnership and action team of food resources. How do you support your students? Community resources, communications. Please let that site be the first site you go to because you might not need another site. And that's www.staysafeccs.org. Let's work together. And if there's more that needs to be on that site, let us know by completing the family needs survey too. Elizabeth, yeah. thank you so much for providing this opportunity. I'll turn my mic off now, Dr. Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I would, in, in closing, I would say, you know, we want to make sure that our families are safe, our staff are safe. Yes, we do have some staff members on the front line and we appreciate those food service workers, um, our safe and security, our, our staff members who are giving our Chromebooks, who are checking in, um, uh, uh, repairing our Chromebooks. Thank you. Um, and we don't want to minimize the safety that the governor and Dr. Acton has stated. We're making sure we are practicing social distancing, all of those measures uh, that we want to make sure that we're modeling too. Uh, but we care about our CCS family. This is, I stated again, an unprecedented time, but we care about our students and our families. We don't know all the answers. We are learning and growing every single day, and we're challenging ourselves to do more. 
to give more, to provide more, to answer all of those tough questions and to be make sure that we're giving you all the answers and being very honest and upfront about what we don't know. Uh, but what we are committed to doing is making sure that we are providing excellent customer service, that we're answering the questions, and that we're recognizing that these are unprecedented times and we may have to do things that we've not done before in an educational platform. And we're committed to that. Um, so stay safe out there to our families and our students. And thank you again um, for your advocacy and wanting to have us and kind of talk about what's happening um, and all the other partners who are working. And one other partner I want to shout out, I know there are many, but just our CODA partners. When we, when we first started this journey um, and we couldn't figure out how we were going to provide food and maybe and people getting to the sites and CODA stepped up and said, okay, I got you. We're providing, you know, transportation at no cost to our pe uh, families to get into feeding sites. But it's those partnerships and more. People are stepping up, and I thank you to all of our partners for 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 being there. Um, and that I appreciate you. I know our board of education does as well. So again, thank you, and please keep those questions coming. Um, mm -hmm. you, you can email me at superintendent at columbus.k12.oh.us. Um, and send those questions and our team will work to get those, um, those answers um, to you. So thank That's you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Dixon. And um, great, great shout out to uh, CODA. It's incredible um, yes. how they stepped up to make sure yeah. our kids are fed and nourished. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you both for being here and being thank game you. to you know try this technology version yeah. of the town hall <laughs> to get the word out yeah. um, to our community. So um, real quick housekeeping, um, on Monday, April 20th, uh, council is back in session and we'll conduct our first completely uh, virtual council meeting and zoning meeting at five, starting at 5 p.m. Um, and then I do not want to sign off of here, uh, first of all, without thanking everyone, um, but second of all, without um, letting you know if you have questions for the city, um, I am EC Brown at Columbus.gov. EC Brown at Columbus.gov. You can reach Dr. Dixon at superintendent um, at Columbus.k12.oh.us. And you can reach um, Mrs. Gillison at engage at Columbus.k12.oh.us. Yeah. And the last thing we will leave everyone with is staysafeccs.org. Yes. <laughs> Write it on your hand, yes. write it on your forehead, <laughs> um, visit the site. There's great resources there. Um, my niece and nephew are at Hubbard Elementary in kindergarten and first grade. Mm -hmm. And I know that my sister um, has found great parent resources there. So thank you both for everything. And thank you those of you for tuning in. Have a great rest of your evening. Right. Good night. All right, thank you.